Okay, I'm going to start us off with our sponsors. Today's Gemara I found to be uh, not an easy one. Let's put it that way. Okay, so we'll do what we can. Uh, sponsors are Dr. Paul Konigsberg, a year of learning in memory of his brother. <coughs> Dr. Sam Konigsberg, Shimshon Ruvain Ben Lebesh, and Ed Goldberg's cousin, Nisan Hara, Nissen Ben Fardosa. Paula and Bob Bromberg, in memory of their dear friend, Julian Smith, Yehuda Ben Yisrael. Malka Mann, in memory of her family murdered in the Holocaust. Harav Tzvi Hirsch Ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. <clears throat> the many friends of Dr. Marvin Blush, Moshe Shalom ben Yitzchak Kalevi, friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova bat Yisrael Dov, friends of Malka Levi, Malka bat Yosef, friends of Avi Gitler, Avramayr ben Shimon, Cheryl Sher, her children and grandchildren, in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Yisrael ben Harav Akiva, Marsha Federbush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Oriel Paul Federbush, Oriel ben Harav Shimon, and friends of Joe Wolf, in memory of Joe Yosef ben Chaim. A month of learning, sponsored by Adina and Michael Kirshner, in memory of their parents, Florence and Nathan Kirshner, and friend Harriet Friedman. Tova and Leo Zimmer, in memory of her mother, Henya Bas Rav Beryl, and her father, Aaron ben Yosef Mordechai. Perry and Jill Meltzer, in memory of his mother, Malka Bas Borach, and his sister, Golda Leah Bas David Halevi. Carol and Josh Sanborn, also in memory of her father, Yehoshua Shia ben Moshe Yehuda Cohen. Stanley Presser, in memory of his mother, Leah Bas Yehuda, his mother-in-law, Golda Bas Avram, and his wife, Ruchu Mincha Bas Moshe. Bru Ruth Burian and Judy and Edward Boyne, in memory of Ruth and Judy's mother, Hadassah Bar Azriel Zelig, and by Miriam, father Yitzchak Ben Yosef by Esther. Today is this also a week of learning by Harry and Myra Wild, or Wild, in memory of his father, Shraga Ben Yecheskel, by Mark and Catherine Linder, in memory of his father, Chaim Ben Yecheskel Eli Melech. Today being the 7th of February, a day of learning by Eva and David Love, in memory of her mother, Chaya Altabas Avram, and by Tamar and Milton Fishberger, in memory of her mother, Baja Bat Azriel. Shemaz Heaven Aliyah, Krenka Rafia, Velti Yashir Hashem Matzlia, and Lachol B'nai Yisrael, a good Gaben Shtiar. Amen. Okay. I would like us to start this morning, uh, if we, and we'll go through as much as we can in our time. Okay, as I said, it's a long Gemara and a little bit difficult. If we look at the very bottom of Ayan Zion Amud Beis, okay, we saw the Detanya about three lines up. Nitma basar on shenifsal oshi chutz leklaim. Rabbi Eliezer Omer Yizrok, Rabbi Yeshua Omer Lo Yizrok. So the Gemara there is continuing a discussion, machloket between them, in regards to various aspects of the Korban Pesach. It listed a number of items there in the bottom of the Amud. Okay, this one in particular, all right? Okay, where the Bright is telling us that if the meat became tame or the meat is pasul, or it was brought outside the klaim, the curtains, in other words, outside the walls of Jerusalem. According to Rabbi Eliezer, one may still throw the blood, still sprinkle, okay? We're going to see that's because Rabbi Eliezer holds that you don't, uh, you, if the blood and the, and the sprinkling are, the meat and the blood are separate items. Okay, Rabbi Yoshua says you cannot sprinkle, and we're going to see why. Now, continuing there, 
ומודה רבי יהושע, שאם זרק, הורצה. But Rabbi Yoshua in this Brita is saying that if it were to be, have been sprinkled, it's acceptable. Now, Gemara picks up there. Chada, the psula, the abad, mashma. According to this statement, in one case where it's invalid, it's after the fact. Va'od, and furthermore, okay, in other words, one reason, all right, that if when it's, as I said, it's uh, invalid, it's after the fact. Va'od, and furthermore, chamisha dvarim ba'im l'chadchila mashma. Okay, that our Mishnah said that there were these five aspects that were acceptable. Okay, in other words, one of them was if the meat was tummy. Ella, rather, said the Gemara on top of Ayin Chet, our Dafa today, Lo Kasha. But rather, perhaps we're going to give an explanation and say it's not problematic. Kan biyachid, kan betzibor. In one case, we're talking about if it's a private individual offering. The other, if it's an offering when it's done as a communal offering. We do know, remember, that a communal korban Pesach, which it is, when the community is tame, it is still to be offered at its appropriate time. Nema matnitin de loka rabiasi. This would then seem to imply that our bright, our Mishnah, is not according to the view of Rabbi Yossi. Why is that? Okay. Well, is it because Rabbi Yossi holds like Rabbi Eliezer? Okay. That, that the meat and the sprinkling are separate items? Or is there a different reason? So the Gemara continues to Tanya, as taught in the Brita. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Hatzitz Meratze al Achilo that he's saying that in this case, the uh, seats, the, let's call it head plate for the moment, worn by the Kohen Gadol, that has the divine name on it, okay, that that then can appease Hashem, if you want to use that term, okay, for parts of the korban that are to be eaten. Rabbi Yossi Omer, and Rabbi Yossi says in this regard, en hatzitz meratza al ha'achilot, that the tzitz does not appease Hashem regarding those parts of the korban that are to be eaten. However, it can appease for those parts of the korban that are offered on the mizbeach. So the Gemara continues, if that's the case, Kasalka da Atcha. Okay, perhaps then I would think as follows. Midika Amar Rabbi Yossi, since Rabbi Yossi seems to be of the view, Ein Hatzitz Meratza Al Ha'achilot, that the Tzitz does not appease for potentially eaten portions of the Korban, Karabi Yoshua Severele, that maybe then, since he doesn't exactly hold like Rabbi Eliezer, maybe he holds the view of Rabbi Yoshua. Okay. Namely, the Amar, who says, Rabbi Yoshua, Ba'in and Tarte, that we need both. We need to have both the meat and the blood available. The meat to be eaten, the blood to be sprinkled. And if we don't have both of them, okay, then you can't it doesn't work, okay? And the seeds is not enough to appease Hashem in that regard. So therefore, Nema, let us say, Hashta, now, Matnitin de Loka Rabbi Yossi, that we therefore also here too, we have to say that this shows that our Mishnah is not according to Rabbi Yossi. 
So if he's not going to hold like Rabbi Yossi, if Rabbi Yossi doesn't hold like Rabbi Eliezer, and he doesn't hold like Rabbi Yoshua, what's the situation? Says the Gemara. Lo, no, says the Gemara. Rabbi Yossi, ka Rabbi Eliezer severely. No, says the Gemara as an answer. It's possible that Rabbi Yossi does hold like Rabbi Eliezer. Da Amar, why? Because he may say, Dam Afal Pisha En Basar. Okay? That so long as we have the blood, okay, even if we don't have the meat, okay, it's still possible to sprinkle the blood and therefore gain the atonement necessary through the Korban Pesach. Ihachi, if that's the case, says the Gemara. Lamai Hilchata, according to which law do we say then that, okay, that uh, the Rabbi Yossi would hold en hatzitz meratze al achilot, that the tzitz does not appease regarding those parts of the korban to be eaten. Uletamech, and according to your line of reasoning, Rabbi Eliezer, the Amar, Chatzitz Meratze, whereas Rabbi Eliezer, who says that the Chatzitz does appease, Kevan da Amar, Dam Afalpi She'en Basar, since he says that so long as you have the blood, even though you don't have the meat, implying the meat to be eaten, Chatzitz Meratze, that the Seeds does appease Hashem, al achilot lemai hilchita. That when he says it does appease on those potential parts to be eaten, with regard to what law does he say this? Ela la mikvae papigu ula afuke midi mide meila kemiflige. It comes to establish that he says whether that particular offering can be determined to potentially be pigul or can be excluded from an aspect of me'ila. That's what they're arguing about. Namely, Rabbi Eliezer Savar, Meratzet Sitz Ilude, that Rabbi Eliezer holds, seems to be of the opinion that when you have meat and blood separately, that the tzitz does appease umashvei leib ketaho, and he compares that offering to something that is tahor, vikavale papigul, and therefore it's possible that it could be subject to the status of pigul in terms of the intention of the Kohen, umafik le mide me'ila, and exclude it from the possibility of becoming subject to me'ila. The Rabbi Yossi Savar, and that Rabbi Yossi, however, holds, lo meratzet tzitz iluye, that the tzitz does not appease Hashem in regarding <coughs> that offering, and we don't compare that offering to something that is tahor. This Korban Pesach, we said that was Tameh. And it cannot establish it based on the intent of the Kohen to a status, potential status of Pigul. Velo mafik le mide me'ila and it doesn't remove it from the possibility of becoming over and me'ila. Now, having said that, we see a challenge based on a brighter. Mat kifla Rav Meri. So Rav Meri challenges by saying, Nehi nami. It's possible also, he says, the Rabbi Yossi Savar ka Rabbi Eliezer, that maybe Rabbi Yossi <coughs> excuse me, does 
have the same mindset as Rabbi Eliezer. Bishlema Zvachim. Okay. In regards to other offerings. Ikadam. Okay. Omeid. Okay. Why? Because you have the blood. You have other offerings. So even if the meat's not available to be eaten, okay, it's still possible to be offered on the Mizbeach. And therefore, the blood is separate. It can be sprinkled. Omer, in regards to the Omer, Nami Ika Kometz, that here too, okay, you still have the fact that you can take a handful. Okay? Lechem Hapanim, as the example, other, another example from our Mishnah, right? Why? Nami Ika Bezichi, because there too you have something that went along with it, namely the spoons of incense. El halechem. But in regards to the shte halechem that was included among the five things listed in our original Mishnah, okay? What about that? My ikalamema. What can you say about that? And if you're going to say, Vachi Tomar, the Karevi Mahem, and if you're going to include the Shte Lechem, okay, on Shavuot, that are brought with the two lambs, and say they're connected, and if you don't have the lambs, you still have the bread, right? Hainu Shomei Tzibur. Those two lambs really are Shlomei Tzibur. They are peace, community peace offerings, okay? And if that's the case, why do you list, right, Shte Lechem separate from Shalmei Tzibor, okay? Im Kain, Havu Laho Arba. That then would only give us four items to be spelled out in our initial, our original, our, our Mishnah, and not five, and we teach five items, right? That's what our Mishnah said, right? Back then, right? Okay. Right, when it said at the very beginning on Ayan Vav Amud Beis, Okay. So what happens? Ella rather, Kasava Rabbiosi, Tuma Hutra Batsibor. It must be, therefore, that Rabbiosi is of the opinion that the Tuma is permitted in regards to a communal offering. So this is going to be initially the possible operating, I'm going to say, procedure that the Gemara is going to try to accept. Ultimately, we may see that it agrees to it, or we may see that it's going to uh, reject it. But let's continue now, because now we see the Gemara tells us, Vaha. But, says the Gemara, what about the following? Tanya, we have a brighter that says as follows. Echad ze, the echad ze. Okay. In one case, we're talking about the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur. In another case, we're talking about another Kohen who's involved with the red heifer. Okay. And we're told in both of those cases... Ze mazin alav kol shiva mikol chataot shahayusham. That those individual kohani were sprinkled every day for a week to purify them from any potential sin situations. Divre Rabbi Meir. That's the view of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yossi Omer. However, Rabbi Yossi in that example disagrees, according to that brighter, and tells us, Ein mazina love, 
that those individual kohanim, okay, were only sprinkled for purification purposes on the third and on the seventh day of the week. So if that's the case, that is problematic to say that Rabbi Yossi says that Tuma Hutra Betzibor, that Tuma is permitted, okay, in regards to communal offerings. And if you're going to think, that Rabbi Yossi is of the opinion, Tuma Hutra Betzibor, okay, that... Uh, as we said, that Tuma is permitted in a communal situation. Lama li haza Why then do these examples of these Kohanim need any kind of sprinkling whatsoever in general? Ela But it's clear, therefore, mat nitin de loka rabbi yasi, that our Mishnah man, must not be according to Rabbi Yossi. Now, Gemara is going to pick up and give us another discussion on this. Okay? The following. Amar le Rav Papa la Abaye. So, in discussing this whole issue, Rav Papa and Abaye, okay, are going to cite. Uh, part of the earlier discussion and continue this uh, back and forth. Okay? So Rav Papa says, for Rebbe Yossi, Shtara Mizachi the Beit Rehu says that Rabbi Yossi's made a statement that's similar to a kind of document, okay, that declares Okay, and entitles uh, somebody to two different, uh, divides up property, let's say, to two different, the same property to two different individuals. And how is that possible? Detanya, because we have a brighter that says as follows. Ama Rabbi Yossi. This is what Rabbi Yossi says. Ro'e ani that I see the perspective, let's say, of Rabbi Eliezer in regards to offerings. And the perspective of Rabbi Yoshua in regards to offerings. Okay? So that's almost contradictory. Furthermore, Rabbi Eliezer and the perspective of Rabbi Eliezer in regards to meal offerings, v'divrei Rabbi Yoshua b'menachot. And I see also the view of Rabbi Yoshua b'menachot in meal offerings. So how can it be that Rabbi Yossi sort of agrees to Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yoshua in animal offerings, but he also agrees with the two of them in regards to meal offerings. We could understand if he said in regards to one vis-a-vis -vis animal offerings in regards to the other in regards to meal offerings. So what is the implication? So Rav Papa continues now, right? And he's telling us the following, right? Divri Rabbi Eliezer B'zvachim the perspective, the words of Rabbi Eliezer regards to the animal offerings, Shahaya Omer, Dam, Afal Pisha Ein Basa. Why? Because he says what, that they have the blood, even though you may not have the meat. Okay? That they're separate items. Okay? Divrei Rabbi Yoshua, Bizvachim, and the perspective of Rabbi Yoshua in regards to animal offerings. Shahaya Omer, that he used to say, im ein dam, ein basa. If there's no blood, there's no meat. Im ein basa, ein dam. If there's no meat, there's no blood. 
Furthermore, says Rav Papa, right? Divrei Rebbe Eliezer b'Menachot, the perspective of Rabbi Eliezer regarding the meal offerings, Shahaya Omer, because he was saying, Kometz Afal Pi She'en Sham Shirayim, that we take the handful, okay, even though there may not be anything left. V'divrei Rabbi Yoshua, and the view of Rabbi Yoshua, b'Menachot, again in regards to meal offerings, Shahaya Omer, he says, Im ein sham shirayim, if there's nothing left over there, oh, ein kometz, you can't take the, let's say the handful, the im ein kometz, and if you can't take the handful, ein shirayim, there's nothing left over. Now, Abaye responds, Amarle, he responds as follows, Mistabra Kamar. Okay, maybe Rabbi Yossi's answer is simply an attempt to give a logical explanation. Okay, namely the following Kikae Bizvachot. When they're discussing, okay, the issue of animal offerings, Amar, Rabbi Yossi says, Mistabra. It seems logical. Ki hechi de plige bizvachim, plige nami b'menachot. That when they argue about general offerings, they also argue about meal offerings. Ka'e b'menachot. And when they're discussing meal offerings, Amar, Rabbi Yossi says, Mistabra, it seems logical. Ki hechi de plige b'menachot that when they're arguing about meal offerings, that they also argue about animal offerings. Now Rav Papa, okay, responds back to Abaye. Amale, he says to him, Hatenach, that may be acceptable. Kikai bizvachim, Amar. When they're discussing the issue of animal offerings, because we can say, Mistabra, it seems logical, that when they argue about animal offerings, that they also argue about the meal offerings. Why? Because in essence, most of the biblical verses, ki ktive bizvachim ktive, because most of those verses are discussing animal offerings, and that's what's written there. And they may disagree on how to interpret those psukim. Ella, however, okay, ki kai b'menachot, but when they're discussing the issue of the meal offering, Va'amar and says, Mistabra, that it seems logical. Ki hechi de plige b'menachot, plige nami b'zvachim. That where they disagree with regards to the meal offerings, they also disagree in regards to animal offerings. Va'ha'ikar, krae b'zvachim hu diktive. But in essence, Okay, most of the psukim dealt with zvachim. It didn't, and that's what they were written about. They didn't deal with issues of the meal offering. Ela lo kasha, says Rav Papa. But perhaps there's not a problem here. Why, says Rav Papa? Ro'e ani et divrei Rabbi Eliezer, that I see that in terms of what Rabbi Eliezer's view is, benitma, that he's talking primarily <coughs> about a situation where the meat is existing, but it's, I'm going to say, simply tame. Okay? Vidivre Rabbi Yoshua. And Rabbi Yoshua is talking about a situation, bi'ibud v'saruf, where the meat is either lost 
or it's been burnt up. In other words, it's no longer present in existence whatsoever. And if that's the case, okay, they're talking about two different situations. Benitma, okay. when we're talking about the meat being tame, ma'itama demishum demurtsait seeds. Why is it possible then to say that you could still sprinkle when the because the meat is there, but it's quote my word simply tame. And therefore, that seeds is able to appease in that situation. Maybe not what it can be eaten, but it can be appeasing in terms of acceptable on the Mizbeach. Ha, Shamatle, the Rabbi Yossi. And therefore, here you come to learn, okay, that Rabbi Yossi says as follows when he says, Ein tzitz miratse al achilot. And that's why Rabbi Yossi says it does, the seeds does not appease in regards to those aspects of the korban that potentially should have been eaten. But it does appease for those aspects simply brought and burnt on the altar because the meat is there. Elet lo kasha. And therefore it's not problematic, says Rav Papa. And I also therefore see that Rabbi Yossi is saying that that's the meaning, <coughs> sorry, of Rabbi Eliezer when he says it's done vis-a-vis a communal offering. Okay. Now, and so when Rabbi, so Rav Papa is explaining that when Rabbi Yossi said that I see the perspective of Rabbi Yoshua, okay, be achid. And therefore that's why he said that it's in regards to the individual offering. Okay. Namely, betzibur, ma'itama, why, it, what's the reasoning? Mishum de tuma hutra betzibur. Why? Because we say that when the offering Passover offering, okay, is tame, and the community is tame, then it's that offering is permitted to be done as a communal offering. Chada, okay, namely, what are we saying here? Okay, all right, okay, and therefore, if we reject that idea, okay, that Tuma is permitted in regards to a communal situation, Gemara is going to say, hold on a second. Maybe that's not the case for the following reasons. Chada, number one, the Shemat le the Rabbi Yehuda, because you've learned that Rabbi, I'm sorry, Rabbi Yossi says, the Amar Tuma de Chuyahi Betzibu. Not that Rabbi Yossi holds that Tuma is permitted, hutra betzibor, but it's only dechuya betzibor. It's only put off, deferred in a communal setting. Va'od, and furthermore, e betzibor, if it's done in a communal setting, Rabbi Eliezer machshir, Rabbi Eliezer permits it, velo Rabbi Yoshua, and does that imply that Rabbi Yoshua does not permit it? Let's go over. Okay. Ha amart betzibur afilu Rabbi Yoshua mode. But don't we say here that you've said that in a communal situation, even Rabbi Yoshua acknowledges el roe ani divre Rabbi Eliezer, but rather. I see the view of Rabbi Eliezer, but the Avad in a situation where it's after the fact. And Rabbi Yoshua, however, is saying ab initio, initially. Okay? So it's as if Rabbi Yoshua is saying, if I don't have the two items, in this case, 
the meat and the blood. Lechatchila, you cannot do even the zrika. Okay? So what happens, says the Gemara? Di avad, after the fact. Afilu Rabbi Yeshua, nami modehu. That then Rabbi Yeshua does acknowledge it. De katani, as was taught, modeh Rabbi Yeshua, she'im zarak hutza. Because it was taught that Rabbi Yeshua says that if it was sprinkled already, it's acceptable. Ha betuma. But that, okay, is in a situation where we were talking about that at least the meat was in existence. It's Ken Green again, simply tame, as opposed to ha be'ibud v'saruf where if the meat is not available whatsoever because it's lost or it's burnt, okay, then what happens? Rabbi Yoshua would not accept the sprinkling, would forbid it, lechat chila, and may not even accept it, b'dievet, okay? Now, ki katani mode Rabbi Yoshua, when Rabbi Yoshua does, when it does teach that Rabbi Yoshua acknowledges, she'im zarak hurtza, that if it's sprinkled, it's acceptable, benitma, okay, when the meat is in a status of tame. Why? Because the meat is still there. And Rabbi Yoshua held, you needed both, the meat and the blood. Aval be'ibud v'saruf, lo. But when the meat is lost or it's totally burnt and not there, no. Now, Gemara picks up and tells us, Ki ka'ama Rabbi Yossi. And when we say that Rabbi Yossi tells us, Ro'e'ani at divrei Rabbi Eliezer, that I see the perspective of Rabbi Eliezer, b'diavad, in regards to after the fact, b'ibud v'saruf, that's a situation that Rabbi Eliezer says, even in a situation where the meat is not present because it's lost or burnt. Okay. In that case, okay, he would still say it is, Rabbi Yossi would still say that he accepts Rabbi Eliezer's view because the blood and the meat are separate items. Okay. Let's go on now to our new Mishnah, all right? Okay, we've been talking about the status of the Korban Pesach, if it's Tame, if it's Tahor. So our new Mishnah says as follows, Nitma Basar, let's say that the meat of the Korban Pesach has become Tame. Chalev kayam, but the fat is acceptable. A no zoreket adam, it is not permitted to sprinkle the blood, says the Mishnah. Nitma ha if the fat has become tame, vahabasar kayam, and the meat is accessible. Zoreket adam, says the Mishnah we are, are able to sprinkle the blood. Ubemukdashim enochim. But in regards to the other offerings, let's say for the moment, ela afal pi shenitma habasar v'hachelev kayam, even though, he says, it could be a situation, in other words, other offerings aside from the Korban Pesach, okay? If the meat becomes tame and the fat, okay, which remember was burnt on the altar, on the Mizbeach, okay? Zorek et adam, then it's permissible for other offerings to sprinkle the blood, okay? Now, Gemara, Amar Rav Gidl Amar Rav. Rav Gidl is saying of the name of Rav, 
Im zarak hurtza. If he sprinkled the blood, it's acceptable. Vahaba inan achila. But don't, that's what our Mishnah said. But don't we require to be able to eat the Korban Pesach? And the Gemara responds, Achila loma akva, that the eating of the Korban Pesach does not invalidate the Korban. Okay? Wait a second, says the Gemara. Bahaktiv. But isn't it written in part of a pasuk, ish lafi achlo, okay, that a person, according to the amount that they can eat, le mitzvah, that's for the purpose of the mitzvah. Ula akev lo, and that doesn't, let's say, hold back. In other words, it doesn't uh, invalidate. No, vahatanya. But isn't it taught elsewhere in a brighter? Bimachset. Okay, in terms of the, according to the number. Milamed she'ein ha-pesach nishchat ela menuyav. That issue of number, says the Gemara, comes to teach us that we're dealing with the slaughtering of the Pesach for those registered. Yechol shachto shelo le menuyav is it possible we might think that one could slaughter the Korban Pesach for the people registered, okay, and still transgress the mitzvah and still be a valid Korban? Talmud Lomar, Ish Lo, But we have a Pasuk that says, again, Person must eat it, right? According to that number. Hakatuv Shana Alav La Doesn't the text then come to teach us that that issue comes to limit, to to uh, with, withhold, let's say, the possibility of the validity of the korba. Ve'itkash and we make an association between those eating and those that are registered. Ella, rather, says the Gemara, Rav, what Rav says, the Amar ke Rabbi Nata, seems to say and agree with the view of Rabbi Nata. The Amar, who says, Achilat Psachim lo Akva that the eating of the Korban Pesach, okay, whether one is capable of eating, does not withhold its validity status as a Korban, or for the Zrika, or for the sprinkling. A Rabbi Natan, which statement of Rabbi Natan gives us that message? Excuse me. Ilemaha Rabbi Natan. If we say it's this statement of Rabbi Natan, the Tanya, where the Brighter teaches Rabbi Natan Omer, who says, Minayin Shako Yisrael Yotzin Bepesach Echad, how is it possible that the entire Jewish nation is satisfied with a single Korban Pesach? Talmud Loma, Veshachta Oto. That the Pasuk says that they slaughtered the Korban, right? The entire community of Israel before nightfall. Is it possible the entire nation can slaughter? But isn't it only possible that one person slaughters? But rather it teaches. Shekol Yisrael Yotzin Bepesach Echad, that the entire nation could be satisfied, fulfill their obligation with a single Korban Pesach. Okay. So the Gemara says, Del Mashani Hatam. Maybe it's different with regards to the Korban Pesach there. Why? De'i Mimashchei Hani, right? Because we say here, all right, 
Chazi Lahani. Why? Because we might say if there's one group, they could withdraw themselves, and then another group can come in. Ve'im Meshchei Hani. And if that other group withdraw themselves, Chazi Lahani, then it's suitable for another group. Halaha, Rabbi Nassim. But maybe it's this statement from Rabbi Nassim, Detanya, who teaches in a Brita, Nimnu alav chavura achat, that if a group registered, okay, v'chazru v'nimnu alav chavura acheret, and then another group came, and they registered themselves on the same korban pesach. We shall name the first group. Sheyesh lehem kazayit. So long as they have at least a kazayis amount of the meat, ochlin, they eat it, upturin, and they're satisfied. Mila asot pesach sheni. They're exempt then from doing, having required to do a pesach offering on pesach sheni. Achronin, but the second group. She'en lahem kazayat, where they don't have a kazayas of meat. E'en ochlin, they don't eat. V'chayavin la'asod pesach sheni. And they are subject to require to do a korban pesach, okay, on pesach sheni. Rabbi Nassan omir. However, Rabbi Nassan says, E'lu ve'elu peturin mi la'asod pesach sheni. Both this group and the second group are exempt from doing a korban pesach, right? On the pesach sheni, shekfan is rak hadam, because the blood has already been sprinkled. So the Gemara says, akate still dil mashani hatam. Maybe it's different in regards to the korban pesach. Deimi mashchehani. Because if these group, one group withdraws, chazi laho, then it's suitable for the other group. Imkain. So if that's the case, is the Gemara. Litne, let us teach it this way. Ho'il v'ru'uyin limshech, since it's possible that one group might find it okay to withdraw, teach it that way. So the Gemara says, so then why did Rabbi Nassim say, because the blood was already sprinkled? Shmamina, but down Talia Milta. That seems to teach us, <coughs> excuse me, that it's dependent on the blood, that that's the important thing. But the eating then does not withhold the validity of the korban. So the Gemara asks now, my duchke de Rav, what forced Rav then, the mokim la matnitin lechachila v'rabinatan, to give such a forced interpretation to our Mishnah initially and specifically according to Rabinatan? Nokma karabanan. Why couldn't he just establish it according to the rabbis? that even after the fact, it's also not acceptable. So the Gemara says, Rav matnitin kashite. Rav had a problem with our Mishnah. Amai, what was it? Tani, it was taught, ein zoreket adam. It said specifically that one doesn't sprinkle the blood. Instead, litne psu. It should have taught that the right that the korban was invalid. Ela shmamina. But rather we must learn from this. En zorek. Yes, the chadchila. That we do not, right? Yes, and regarding to the to the uh, sprinkling initially. Aval diavad, but after the fact, Shapir Dami, that it seems valid. Rabbi Natan, and therefore, if that's the case in regards to Rabbi Natan, where it says the part of the pasuk Ish lafi ochlo, 
Okay, that they must eat it. Lamali, why does he say it? Because he says it has to be an individual who's suitable to being able to eat. So now the Gemara is going to give us a number of uh, quick statements. We'll try to finish up. Mad Tanalaha. Who is the Tana that taught the following? The Tana Rabbanan that the Brite teaches, Shchato achlav v'zarko damo shalo achlav. Okay, that they slaughtered it for those who could eat it and sprinkled the blood for those who could not eat it. Ha-Pesach atzmo, kasher, the Korban Pesach itself is valid. V'adam yotze bo yedei chovato, and one fulfills his obligation. Keman, According to whom? Name a Rabbi Natan, he, the low Rabbanan. Shall we say it's Rabbi Natan and not the rabbis? A filu tema Rabbanan. We can even say it's the rabbis. Why? Ein machshevet ochlin vizrika. Because there's no issue of intent regarding eating vis a vis the sprinkling. Next statement. Man tanalaha. Who is the Tana that taught the following? The Tana Rabbanan, that we teach in a Brita. If one was sick during the time of the slaughter. And healthy during the time of the sprinkling. Healthy during the time of the slaughter. And sick during the time of the sprinkling. We do not slaughter or sprinkle, okay, for that individual. Until they are healthy from the time of the slaughter through the time of the sprinkling. Keman, according to whom? Name a Rabbanam he. Shall we say it's the rabbis? Velo Rabbi Nasan and not Rabbi Nassim. Afilu tema Rabbi Nassim. We can even say it's Rabbi Nassim. Why? Because Rabbi Nassim holds gava de chaze la ba'inam, that we need the person to be suitable, fit, to be able to eat it. So we ask, man tana laha, who is the tana that taught the following? He says, the tana Rabbanan, that we teach in a brighter. Shchato b'tahara, they slaughtered it in a status of purity. And afterwards, the owners became Tameh. One should sprinkle the blood in purity. But not eat the meat in Tameh. Keman, according to whom? Ama Rabbi Eliezer. Says Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Natanhi, that there's a machloket, an argument between Rabbi Natan and others, and it was taught by Rabbi Natan. The Rabbi Yochanan Amar, and says Rabbi Yochanan, Afilu tema Rabbanam he. We might even say it's the view of the rabbis. Why? Because Hachabamas is kinen. What are we talking about? Betzibur, in a communal situation. The Afilu betuma nami avde. Because there, even in a status of Tuma, we carry out the avoda, right? The service. Ibatsibur, if it's in regards to a communion, Amai ein habasar nechal betuma. Why then do we say, yes, don't we say that the meat can be eaten in Tuma? Gzeira shema yitma'u ba'alim la'achar zrika. But we made a decree lest we're concerned that the owners become Tame after the Zrika. Vayamru, and they might say, Eshtakad, lo nitma'u v'achalnu. We weren't Tame and we ate. Hashtanami nichol. Here now also we should be able to eat. Velo yadeid ishtakeid. And they did not know that last year, ki is darik dam, that when the blood was sprinkled, the owners were tame. 
Hashta ba'alim tahorin havu. Here now, okay. Now the question is: Are the ba'alim? Are the owners? Are they pure or not? Just go over a tiny bit to finish up. Ve'ibayit ema. And if you want, I would say as follows: Rav de Amar Rabbi Yoshua, that Rav holds the view of Rabbi Yoshua de Tanya, as taught in the Brayta. Rabbi Yoshua says, "Kol hazvachim shebetora." Whether the meat is tame and the fat is good, or the fat is tame and the meat is good, zorek et hadam, one nevertheless sprinkles the blood. And that's where we'll stop right there. Okay? So we'll continue tomorrow with other examples. Okay? of this situation of the different views. Okay. All right, guys. Everybody take care. Thank have a good day, everybody. Thank stay you. well. Have a Thank good you, day. Robert. Thank you. Everyone have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care.